Start with Joe up in the front. Coach, since we didn't get a chance to talk to you during the spring, just how pleased were you with the progress and picking up your system and just the progress also during the summer? Uh, very pleased. Um, like Coach said, lethal simplicity, and that's why I think we mesh so well together. Um, uh, the guys from day one to, to, to the spring game, day 15, uh, they really picked everything up. Uh, and, and, and the more comfortable they got with the defense, the better uh, each individual looked. So we looked better as a defense overall. So there's still some room to grow, obviously, and some things that we still got to you know, get better at. But uh, very pleased with uh, how, they, how they progressed. Uh, from day one to day 15. Uh, as far as the summer is concerned, like Coach mentioned, uh, we, we were big on teaching football IQ this summer, understanding certain things about offenses in certain situations because we are so simple. The reason we stay simple on defense is so they're not thinking about their job as much as, I know my job. Now, how are these guys trying to attack us? Or how are they trying to attack me individually? And, uh, and, and so that's something we were teaching them football IQ this summer, and we feel very good about it. And we're going to see uh, the, real, the results of it hopefully on, on this week, tomorrow, starting with tomorrow. Stay up front and go with Brendan. Hey, Coach, uh, <coughs> what was it like when you first heard from Florida State? And obviously, you, you had a good job at a place that you love. What, what made you decide Florida State was a, was a fit for you worth taking the jump? Well, um, and I told the story over and over so many times. I, I, I got it locked down, but I'll give it again real quick to you guys. But um, I, at Michigan State, um, 2016, 3 and 9, bad year. Our worst year up there. Um, and so we come back 2017, and we're all focused, ready to get it done. We just change some things up, how we practice, and just like this, that, and other. Uh, go nine and three in the regular season, so we totally flip the flip the uh, record, and then we go out to San Diego and play in the Holiday Bowl, and uh, and and beat Washington State and go ten and three. Um, that night after the game, I get a text from Coach Woody, that that was the one guy I knew on on Coach Taggart's staff. Uh, from when he was a head high school coach in Palmetto. I used to recruit down there, and, and we had a relationship that way. Uh, he texted me, called me, important. I still got it on my phone. I'm never going to erase it. Called me, important. I'm like, man, they didn't congratulate us on the win, man. We won. I forget. Whatever. It's just late at night. This is this is like midnight because it was a late, it was out there in San Diego, you know, uh, Pacific time, and the game was a night game. So, you know, it was, it was, it was late. And I said, nope, I ain't. So the next day, we're set to fly out. We're actually on the tarmac, uh, getting on the plane, and you know they dwan and everybody. And so my wife and I get on the plane. I get the same text from Coach Woody. Call me important. So I called him. I called him. I said, "What's going on?" Hey, hey, man, Coach uh, Tag would like to know if you'd like to interview for the Florida State defensive coordinator job. What? You know, and my mind had already went into shutdown. We went from three and nine to ten and three, and we about to have about a week, about ten days off. I'm about to go home and relax. Da da da. Now it's back into whoa. Okay, uh, I said, hey, can you have Coach Tagger just call me tomorrow after 10 a.m. Let me sleep in a little bit. Um, sure enough, Coach Tagger called me the next day. Um, I uh, I said, yeah, I wanted to come down and interview. I did so, um, and. On his way driving me back to the airport, Coach Taggart kind of nonchalantly just said, hey, well, what we can do for you is this, this, this. I'm like, is he offering me the job? I think he is, I, you know. And so uh, it went from there. Um, I, I always told uh, Coach D'Antonio that I would keep him informed on every step of the way. I think that's the right thing to do. Not that I had to do it, but I think it's the right thing to do. And I told him what was going on, and I went back and met with him. and. My wife and I talked about it, and then I said, well, I'll have a decision uh, the next day. And uh, that night, I wrestled on it. I'm a spiritual person, so I'm praying on it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I wake up the next morning, and uh, I'm like, wow, this is tough. And so uh, as I was getting out the shower that next morning, right before I was going to make the calls, I was reminded of something I felt that uh, God had spoken to me the year before, and he, and he and I only told my wife this at the time, and this is how I made my decision. And he said, this coming year, this is after the three and nine year, I felt he said this to me, this coming year is going to be your last year at Michigan State. And that was brought back to my remembrance. And that's how I made my decision. And so I had to uh, let everybody know Coach, Coach Tagger was fired. He wouldn't even let me call him. He said, I said, I'll call you back and let you. He called me first. I'm like, dang, Coach. So I told him, you know, I I'm coming. And he was fired up. I was fired up. 
And uh, and uh, then I had, you know, I was going to call Coach D'Antonio before him, but he called me before I could call him. And, uh, and and I ended up calling Coach D and letting him know. And I think he was more sad than mad because we had been together for 14 years. Um, but it was a chance for me to stretch myself. Obviously, I was co-defensive coordinator up at Michigan State and defensive coordinator here. And uh, just a chance for me to stretch myself. It was it was nothing more than that. And then, you know, feeling like I, I, was, I was led to be here. We'll go back left for Jeff. Coach, uh, in looking at last year's defensive tape for Florida State, uh, how much of it have you been able to do and what did that reveal? Um, I've been able to uh, watch a lot of it. Um, and, and they're different. They were different than us. They were more of a 3-4 type team. Um, uh, the D-line were more, you know, head up with some, you know. And so we, we go to a 4-3, and that's not a knock. It's, you know, I always say there's only one way to do something. That's the right way, but there's more than one right way. And so that's what they do. They've been successful in that defense before. Um, but we, we're a 4-3. We're going to get after you. We're going to uh, have our ends on the edge, uh, have our backers reading and playing downhill fast. And if this, this, the uh, formation dictates, we'll have our, our safeties downhill as well. Because the number one thing is we, that we want to do is stop the run. And so I saw what I did see from last year's defense is some dudes here. They got some good players here uh, that can that can execute uh, what we want to try to do, and uh, and they and they started showing that in the spring, and uh, hopefully it'll continue this fall camp. We'll go to Sean on your right, Coach. Have you noticed any differences between having the role as co-defense coordinator versus being the only defense coordinator, and how's that trans transition been so far? Um, well, uh, we truly tried to share the roles up at, at Michigan State, Mike Trestle and myself, and uh, other than you know. Game day, I called I called the defense, and um, but other than that, you know I, I pick up a few more duties, obviously, because uh, we were splitting some some of those. But other than that, and, and it's not it's not a tough thing, you know. It's just a matter of uh, organizing organizing yourself and getting things, uh, you know, on a done in a set schedule and preparing yourself the right way. So uh, got a lot of help uh, here as well uh, in in our defensive staff that, that that's helping me out. And uh, it hasn't been a bad, a hard transition. Stay on the right. Go to Tim. Coach, I just wonder what you could tell us about Coach Snyder. Uh, was he like working with Michigan State, and what made you want to have him on your staff here? Uh, coach Snyder is a, is a is a veteran coach. Um, as he mentioned to us, he said over the break, over the vacation break, his wife mentioned to him, "Hey, you about to go into your 29th year coaching," and uh, and he's, he he brings a lot, a wealth of knowledge and experience um, to the game. Um, obviously, been a a, a coordinator uh, at major Division one schools and a head coach. So, what he what he did one of the big things for us flipping that season uh, from 2016 to 17 at Michigan State was he came in as our linebacker coach the first two years, and then we moved him to DN coach. So we had we had a DN coach and a D tackle coach, same way we're doing it here, and uh, and and Trestle went back to linebackers, and I totally believe that changed our 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 whole season, our whole defense around, and he he does a great job of uh, getting to know the kids and teaching them the the entire defense, like the defensive ends, they not only know their spot, they know everybody, they know the coverage, they know everything, where everybody, how everything fits, and that's a testament a testament to him and how he coaches those guys. Kurt, right beside Tim. Hey, Coach. Uh, kind of a traditional defense. They lost seven starters off last year's team, but there's a lot of really young, talented guys. I mean, like, what have you seen, especially from the sophomores and Hamza, Stanford, and Cyrus? I mean, have they, what did they show you this spring? And, I mean, what did you do? Uh, they showed me that they had um, a lot of great ability, man. Um, great, great ball skills. They can run. They're tough, physical. And that's what we're looking for. Um, and so I – my job is, and because you mentioned DBs, all three of those guys are defensive backs, um, is to get those guys to, to play with uh, technique consistently, uh, bent knees, looking at the right thing, and, and that's my job, to get that done. And uh, I think they appreciate that as well. And so uh, I, I'm going to be hard on them, uh, as, as hard as I can be on them, to get them to execute that part of their game, to, to elevate their games in that way. They have the natural ability. Now it's doing all the little things right, the fundamental things, and that's, that'll be the main focus uh, this, this fall camp. We'll go to Ryan, second row on the right. Coach, I know you said you had a chance to look over a little bit of film before you got hands on with the guys, but was there something that once you got to be with them over spring that really kind of surprised you that maybe you didn't expect out of your group? Um, you know what? <laughs> 
<laughs> as we went through spring, I'm like, man, there's some, some dudes here, man. You know, I'm, no disrespect to Michigan State, not at all. Obviously, it's my alma mater, but it's, it's some dudes down here, man. Um, guys that, that jumped out at you and had really good springs, a Brian Burns, I'm, that's a dude, man. That's a dude. Um, um, still haven't seen Josh Kando yet. You know, he didn't go through spring, but I'm hearing how much of a dude he is. And, and that's just one guy. I mean, there's multiple guys. Uh, Janoris Robinson really stepped up his game uh, according to what others had said about him. Because we were hearing all this stuff, but now I'm seeing other things. I'm like, I don't know what y'all are saying, but this dude is a good player. Um, uh, Kyle Myers, good player. Um, A.J. Westbrook. I mean, I could go on and on. Um, d Jack, good players. A lot of good players. Um, that, that really bought into what we were asking them to do. And I think they appreciate the simplicity of our defense and being able to um, not only know what they have to do, like I said earlier, but understand how the, how the offense is trying to attack us. We're going to Lane in the very back. One of the hallmarks of your Michigan State defenses seem to be the way that players swarm to the ball. How important is that aggressiveness of getting 11 guys to the ball to, to what you do? Extremely important. It, it helps cover up mistakes. If someone misses a tackle, I mean, they have guys on scholarship as well. Uh, you got another guy that's coming to clean it up. And, uh, and our, our main thing is if that something like that did happen, if you miss it the right way, understanding leverage and, and, and things of that nature. But flying to the ball, there's no substitute. Uh, that's the hallmark of a defense, I think. And, and you can watch it, and we should be flying around to the ball. We want getting hats to the ball and, uh, and, and, and making the offense say, hey, man, I do not want to run the ball. We'll go with Joe back here in the front. Marlon, when it comes to your defensive philosophy and the scheme, how much of it is – what you learn from Mark or just to learn it from Nick as a player and coach and maybe from Belichick also? Uh, all of it is kind of <laughs> intertwined, to be honest with you. I try to take pieces from the different places I've been and the different coaches I've been around. Um, but the defense itself, uh, Pat Narduzzi, head coach at Pitt, we all, when Coach D'Antonio put us together in 2004 at the University of Cincinnati, myself, Mike Tressel, and at the time our D-line coach was Ted Gill, we all were from different places, and we came together uh, with Pat. And, uh, and this is a defense that he had been running uh, for the most part, and we've tweaked it over the years and made it fit to how we do what we do to where now you're seeing the product that's out there. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been able to, you know, have, have successful defenses uh, because of it. And, um, you know, we, we always focus on number one thing is to stop the run. That's the number one thing for, for a defensive a football team is to stop the run. And I think Walt would say the number one thing for offense is run the football. Um, so we're going to fo focus on that and try to make them one-dimensional. And then after that, you go from there. Um, but it's a defense that, that was formulated over the last 14 years of, 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 of us running it, seeing all the ins and outs of, of it, and uh, understanding you know, people trying to attack you this way or that way. We, we figure all that stuff out over the last 14s we felt. Now, there's going to be other ways people are going to try to attack us down here, I'm sure, and we'll try to figure those out as well. Go Corey, second row on the left. Harley, you talked about uh, football IQ. What is Jaden Woodby's football IQ? And is he somebody that even as a true freshman you imagine can make an impact this season? It's, it's extremely high. His football IQ is extremely high, and it's, be, it's not so much of what he had already known, but because he puts so much hard work in, he's so diligent in everything that he does, he's raised it to another to a level that, you know, because he's like, man, I didn't know that. I didn't. But he knows it now, and you better believe he knows it. So uh, it's, it's extremely high now. I think it's, if you ask him, he said it's better than what it was uh, before he first got here, and we want to continue to take him to that le He's one of those guys that can't get enough. He can't get enough of football. He can't get enough, and, and he's a goal-oriented person, and you would love to have a team full of that guy. And going back to the uh, the car ride to the airport with Willie, when did, how did you finally determine, yeah, he did just offer me the job? Uh, <laughs> because, actually, when I, uh, when I got back home that night, cause I, again, it's two times I said, I'll call you, and he called me first. So I got back home that evening uh, after leaving here, and he called me, and then he, and he started talking talking more specific in, in, in those terms. I'd like to offer you the job. And you see what I'm saying? So it got, that's a good question, but he, uh, he got more specific with it, and, uh, and it just went from there. Okay. Coach, I assume you've had a chance to peek a little bit ahead at some of the opponents, especially in the ACC, Florida State's going to face this year. How are they different that you've seen maybe than what you saw in the Big Ten? And then if they're a little different, how may that change how you handle approach things? schematically or philosophically? Well, um, a lot of these uh, teams are offenses across the country, even in the Big Ten. I know, you know, there's a 
you know, yeah, some type of uh, thought process towards how Big Ten football is. But there are a lot of teams that try to do some of the things that are done in the ACC, believe it or not. A lot of, a lot of teams are going to what we call blue personnel or 11 personnel, um, you know, uh, one running back, one tight end, three wide receivers. A lot of teams are going to that, and we saw that in the Big Ten as well. You see that with Penn State, uh, Indiana, Ohio State. Um, so and people going fast and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we felt like the, the defense has gone against – these type of teams over and over uh, over the years and, and feel like we got some uh, answers to the things they like to do. Uh, it's great that our offense goes fast because that's, that's the thing that everybody tries to do now and wear you out. So uh, at Michigan State, we had to get our scout team to understand this is fast because we didn't go that fast, right? So we had to get our scout. Now when we go scout team, they understand the tempo of it. So that, that will really help us out. That was serving as an advantage to us, I think, uh, this year just because it's what we already do here. Go Aslan, back right corner. Yeah, hey, Coach, you mentioned 4-3, I guess, is your kind of base. Is it three of what we would consider traditional linebackers, or one of those guys going to be more of a hybrid? Also, I guess to that degree, are you a, like a cover three pattern matching kind of guy in terms of what you guys are going to run, basically? Uh, I wouldn't say cover three. If I said that, anybody that knows us, they'd be laughing, saying he's lying. Uh, no, no, we're going to, we're going to. Uh, that guy, that guy is what I, I tell all, all the people all the time. The star linebacker for us, he's like an old school strong safety. Is is, is kind of what I think. I, I think the old school strong safety doesn't exist anymore. Not in the type of defense that we're trying to run. You know, the big old guy, the the David Fultures of the world, Steve Atwater type guys, uh, because everybody has to be able to run, cover, and tackle. Everybody in the secondary, I believe. And so uh, when you talk about is he playing um, corner, what you recruiting him as as a corner or a safety, I'm saying DB now. Just, and that, that philosophy of mine has just changed since being here. Uh, you got to be able to run, cover, and tackle everybody. And so um, we look for guys to be able to do that. And, uh, and we feel like we got some guys here that can do that because uh, it's just such a big space game nowadays. And so you got to be able to, to cover yourself in space. Hopefully I answered your question. Coach, at times uh, last season and seasons before, once this team had you know, a turnover or a mishap on defense, um, they started to pile up. They started to lose their confidence a little bit. Um, when these things kind of happen you know, in, in, in camp and, and during games this season, what are some things that you're going to do to try to bring them back to square one? Uh, we'll talk about it prior to. Uh, we've been talking about it. Adverse situations. When something, when adversity hits, how are we going to handle it? So handling adversity. And we've been talking about it, talking about it, talking about it over and over and over. Obviously, in camp is one of the most uh, adverse times uh, for everybody involved. You know, it gets to be, it gets to be long. It's long days. It gets to be day ten. And this is something I've always said uh, since I've been coaching. You know, day one, everybody fired up, flying around, looking good. Okay, you get to day ten. You got a fingernail hurt, an elbow sore. Uh, who's going to still be showing up now? Okay, you get to day 20. Who's still showing up getting it done? Uh, and, and some of these injuries that you get uh, in camp, you have for the rest of the year in football. Uh, and I just remember that as a player. So what, what are you going to do to be able to push through? And that's how we've been talking to them, just handling adverse situations. You know, um, you get, you get, I'm, I'm sure Coach Tag will be putting us in adverse situations where our guy think he made a play, and he said, no, it's really a first down offense. How are we going to handle that? You know, so we talk to them about it. So they're prepared, and everybody don't get to whining and complaining to one another and just line up and play. We've got time for a couple more. We'll go to Wayne right here. Coach, the linebacker position lost all three stars from last year. Just what did you think from that unit in the spring, and just how excited are you for the young guys? Um, I think it's a unit that, that, that doesn't have a lot of depth right now, but that has really stepped up. And uh, they understand, they hear all the talk about linebackers this, linebacker that. So they, they've taken it as a personal challenge, I think, with a chip on their shoulder type thing. And, and they're coming to play. They know what they need to do to get it done. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited about the guys, all of them. I really am. And, and again, because of how we play and, and, and their understanding of the defense, it allows them to play fast, physical, and aggressive. All right, last one, Ira, over here on your left. Coach Barnett, uh, Coach um, Tiger talked about having Coach Bowden around, and he didn't see that as a negative, having a former coach around. Obviously, Mickey Andrews is kind of a legend around here as well. Uh, how, how has it been just talking to him, meeting him, and what do you look forward to from that relationship? Wisdom. I love it, man. I, the first time I met him, I, I came by here maybe in February or something because all they talk, you know, Mickey Andrews is that guy around here, right? 
I, first thing I said, Coach, you got to give us some wisdom. Give us some wisdom because I, I, and I, I glean on that type of stuff. And I just wrote down, I'm not going to share what he said, but I wrote it down and I got it in my notes. So then when this came about uh, and Coach Tagger said he wanted to bring him on, I said, awesome. That's awesome. Um, you know, there's nothing like getting getting that wisdom. Um, I'm always trying to pull wisdom from um, older people that have experienced things that I have not, and uh, because you can learn from their mistakes and their successes. And so I think it's big time. I, I'm I'm fired up about it. I really am. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.